Hey, howdy everyone. I'm Michael Perch and I'm an associate professor at the University of Texas at Austin and I record all of my lectures. I put them online to support my students with evergreen content, working professionals who want to learn new digital skills, and maybe, maybe, maybe inspire some folks to go into engineering or geoscience or any science or any STEM in any college. So I hope this is helpful. Let's tear down barriers and make this accessible to more people. I think it's good. All right. So what we're going to do with this video is we're going to do a walkthrough of an interactive, simple Kriging demonstration. Now, I am super stoked and quite proud of this workflow. I want to send a shout out to Dr. John Foster, my partner in crime in the Datum teaching company that we work together in for inspiring me to do more with interactive things in Python. And I have just been going through and doing a lot of interactive stuff. And I think this is very useful. See if you like it, if it helps you learn the concept of simple Kriging. Okay, now, first of all, if you want to see the workflow, all you have to do, and if you want to download and work on it for yourself, follow along with this video, I would love you to, you can go to my GitHub account, github.com geostatsguy, and I have a bunch of different repositories. Now, I have one repository, Python Numerical Demonstrations, and if you go into that, you will find interactive workflows, a whole bunch of them, I'm getting all excited about them. Download interactive simple Kriging and you can follow along too. It's the same as what I'll be going through. Now, if you want to download them, the one easy way to do it is you click on clone or download, download zip. You'll get a zip file of all workflows. Grab that workflow, put it in a working directory, open it up. Now, if you need some help in working with the basics of Anaconda and Jupyter Notebooks, I won't cover that here. I do have basic videos on that and there's other resources on the web, of course. Okay, so let's keep going here with regard to this interactive workflow on Kriging. Now, first of all, anyone who's seen my workflows before knows that I like to put some documentation, some explanation. We're doing spatial estimation here with simple Kriging. I explain the simple Kriging system, some of its aspects, the Kriging variants. I have recorded lectures and you can find out more right down there. There's a recorded lecture that will give you much more technical background, theoretical background on this. I don't have time to cover that here. We're going for interactive workflow now. Okay. Now I also explained about semi barograms. Please refer to this video right here. If you want to learn more about semi barograms, how do you calculate them? How do you model them and so forth? We'll just play around with the model parameters and see how it responds. So go catch those videos so you can catch up. Okay, so let's get started. Let's just get right to it because this is too much fun. Now, we're going to import GeostatPy, the package that I've developed to support spatial data analytics. I wrote it specifically. I needed something for my courses and for my students. Let's go ahead and import that. Now we can go ahead, once we have GeostatPy to do all the Veragram stuff, we can go ahead and load up a bunch of packages. Now we're going to need pandas and numpy because we always work with numpy for nd arrays, arrays of data, pandas for data frames, matplotlib for plotting. Love it. Actually, very, very flexible. Matplotlib combined with ipy widgets allows us to build the interactive methodologies that you're about to see. And we have a bunch of other things we import, but that's the main ones. Okay, so now let's go ahead. The first thing we're going to do is let's make a very simple, simple Kriging function. Now, if anybody out there is kind of like, what's the simplest code you could write and do simple Kriging? I tried to accomplish that right there. I tried to make a very simple program that would just take a data frame with locations X and Y and the values and then take another data frame with the locations you want to estimate at, X and Y, the Veragram and the simple Kriging mean. Boom. Given all that. Now, for anybody knowledgeable in Kriging, I am not using any search parameters. So you would not do this with a large data set. It's assuming all the data all the time for every estimate. Okay, just in case you try to use this program with something big. Let's go ahead and run that code. We run that code. Now we have simple, simple Kriging. I thought that was kind of funny. I guess I could have called it simple square. Or, okay, anyway. Now, this part I will not spend any real time on. Please, if you're interested in getting into interactive workflows, look through this example. It might be helpful to you. I'll just say the top part 
is declaring the dashboard with all of the widgets. And this part is declaring a function that the widgets will now feed into with their inputs. And every time you adjust a widget, it's gonna do all the calculations fresh. So that's why we needed a very fast creaking methodology because it actually reruns everything every single time you change any parameter. And you'll see a little flicker in the plot because of that. Uh, it's simple, it works, it's fine. Okay, so it does the calculation of the Veragram, builds a Veragram model, runs the simple, simple Kriging approach, gets the, the estimate and the estimation variance, gets the weights for all the data. That's part of the reason I wrote my own algorithm, so I would get the weights assigned to each data as an output. The SK weights right here are a one-dimensional array with all of the, for the, in the data order, the amount of weight each one of them got for the current estimate. S Kriging estimation, Kriging variance right there. Everything we need to display. Now we've run that and we now have our display ready to go. Oh, this is so exciting. Now what we get to do is basically instantiate the display, the dashboard, and we see it right now. Now I've set it so nothing shows up until we change something. So just to do that, let me just oscillate that back and forth. And so now we have the beginning screen. We have the very beginning. Okay, what do we have? We have zero nugget effect, isotropic 100 meter by 100 meter major minor one structure, spherical, with a azimuth, doesn't matter, it's isotropic, but zero, 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 right? And so what we have is a circle. So here's the unknown location. It's going to be right about there. And we have spatial continuity model for range of 100 meters isotropic. Now, if you look at that display, you'll notice it's a little bit not isotropic. And the reason being is, uh, I tried to get as big display as I could. And so this is 1000 meters, this is 1000 meters. I have a little skew in the display. Not a big deal, we can account for that in our, in our minds. We know that that's going on. But this is a circle drawn with an axis that's skewed out a little bit, not a big deal. Now, this is the Veragram range. This is the unknown location. The current estimate is going to be 2.0. Why is that? Because data point number one right here is out of range, but it has a value of one. This is a value of two here. This is a value of three. And I said the simple Kriging mean should be equal to 2.0. The mean of the data set is 2.0. So I'm outside of the range of correlation of any of the data, no weight, zero weight, no weight, zero weight here too, and zero weight right here. And the result is that we estimate with the global mean, which is 2.0. Okay, so let's try an experiment. Let's try something out. Let's try increasing the major range. Okay, a little bigger, a little bigger. Look at that, look at point number two. Ta-da, point number two now has a weight of 0 0.01. 99% of the weight goes to the global mean, 1% of the weight goes to that point. 3% of the weight, 6%. You see that as I increase the range, now 20% of the weight is going to data point number two. Our estimate is still 2.0. Why is that? The global mean is 2.0 and that data value is 2.0. So it's still gonna be an estimate of two. But look at the simple Kriging variance is now 0.96. It's a standardized variable. We would expect maximum uncertainty variance of one, but we're starting to decrease the uncertainty. Okay, let's go ahead and bump that up a bit more. Look at that, Kriging variance down to 0.9. The weight is now 0.4 almost. 0.84 Kriging variance. We're starting to get less and less uncertainty the estimate remains at two. Okay, we have a highly anastropic, well, let's get it all the way up to 10 to one. That's a 10 to one anastropy ratio. The major is 1000 meter range. The minor is 100 meter range. The distance from here to here is 100 meters. Distance from here to the end of the ellipse is gonna be 1000 meters. And this value has now 0.56 weight, 0.44 weight goes on the global mean and the estimation variance, the Kriging variance is now down to 0.68. Okay, let's try something else. Let's try rotating the directionality, that anastropy ratio. It's all with the major in the 0, 0, 0 direction, the Y axis. Let's go ahead and change it to 22.5. Look, none of the data get any more weight because nothing is correlated with the unknown location. Look at that. Now 0.24 weight on data point one with a value of one. 
the Krieging estimate is now 1.76. It's being weighted towards the one. The Krieging variance is 0.94. Now let's go ahead and increase the range up to a couple thousand meters and watch what happens. The Krieging variance is decreasing. The weight is increasing on this data point right here. We're going, keep going. Incredible, eh? The weight is now 0.53. And as we get to 2,000 meters, 0.59, almost 0.6, the simple Krieging variance, estimation variance is equal to 0.66. Now what we can do is, th this will be interesting, let's keep rotating. Rotate away, oh, zero weight for everything. The Krieging variance is now one, there's no information to help us. We got the global variance as our local Krieging variance and the estimate is 2.0, we're estimating with the mean. Let's keep rotating. Look what happens. Now, we have a pretty good correlation with location number three, and this is pulling us higher because that has a value of three. Now, something I should note is part of the reason that is not a really strong weight is because it's right on the edge of the ellipse. Now, what you could do is you could just kind of move that data, scoot it over just a little bit. Okay, let's just move it over. You see what happens as we move over? The weight goes up and up and up. This distribution is shifting closer to three, better, more influence from that three point. Whoa, ho, ho, look at that. Weight of 0.52 for data point number three. And our estimates now 2.5. The Krieging estimation variance has gone down. Okay, and we can keep rotating back to the vertical direction. Now, let me just demonstrate a couple more concepts. Let's, let's go ahead and move the data in closer. So I can move data point number one and data point number two and data point number three. I can move everything kind of closer in. Let's put them kind of closer in here. Then let's increase this direction right here. So everything is now going to be correlated. Okay, so now we have pretty good correlation. I'll move data point number th three just a little bit this way. I don't want it right on top of the other data point. Okay, okay. so now what you can see is all of our data have weights. 0.35 for data point number two, 0.39 for three, 0.29 here for data point number one. Okay, now what is the impact on Krieging of changing the nugget effect? What would happen if we changed the nugget effect? Okay, we got a nugget effect of zero, zero, zero. Now I wanna show you the Veragram model we're working with, this is the major direction right here in the orientation of 180 which is the same as zero, 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 they're symmetric. And this is the orientation right here of in 270, which will be the same as the 90 degree direction. And these are all the angles in between just to, for display purposes. Now let's increase the nugget effect to 50% nugget effect. Now I hope what you can see is as we increase the nugget effect, let's go back, look at the estimation variance is 0.71, 0.62, you see how much the nugget effect impacts the uncertainty? As I go higher and higher and higher nugget effect, the uncertainty goes up. The weights go down, more weight on the global mean. And by the time I get to 100% nugget effect, it doesn't matter what the spatial structure was, it's all nugget effect, there's no correlation. We go to the global distribution with the global mean and global variance again. Okay, let's drop the nugget effect back down. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to demonstrate one more thing. Let me show you the screening effect. And we're in a good position to do that. We kind of almost did it before. Let's, if anybody's ever played hockey before, screening is the idea of taking a shot on the goaltender when you've got a, um, one of your forwards or the center blocking the goaltender so they can't see the shot. So with screening, what we want to do is we'll have a data point here and we'll put data point number three in front of it. We'll screen the estimation location from the perspective of data point one. That's a screening. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and we'll move data point number three in front. Okay, let's see. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Let's see if we can get a little bit more in front. No, we'll put it back here. Okay, so what's really interesting here is that when we do that, this data value gets all of the weight. It gets most of the weight. You saw a total amount of weight somewhere around 0.65 or so shared with data point number one. But now it takes all the weight and data point number one loses weight. Now I want you to notice it also slips into negative weight. 
In fact, this is a negative weight right here. Negative weight in screening means that Kriging is able to extrapolate outside of the data range, the range of values between all of the data involved in the estimate. Because we're working with residuals, we got negative and positive data. What will happen is if you screen a data point and it's negative with a negative weight, it'll become a large value, a positive value. And if you add that to the positive value right here with positive weight, the result is you can actually extrapolate outside of the data range. Okay, I hope this was useful to you. I think personally, this is a wonderful chance to play with the Kriging system. I invite you to consider all kinds of different things you can do, like switching your to Gaussian. Look at what Gaussian does. It puts so much emphasis on short scale continuity. It very much boosts the effect of the nearest data. So that's really interesting. While well, exponential does the opposite. It really does have more discontinuity in the short range. So it'll actually result in less weight on the closest data. You can do a lot of different things with changing these structures, changing the data locations and exploring the behavior of simple Kriging. All right. I hope this was interesting and of use to you for learning about simple Kriging. I thought it was really, really fun. Now, I'm Michael Perch. I'm an associate professor at the University of Texas at Austin, and I am more than stoked to share all of my lecture material, lectures with anyone in the world wanting to learn about data analytics, geostatistics, and machine learning. All right, everyone take care.